fine Cause you're an asshole tonight Is this thing on? Are we, yes. good? Are we good to go? All right, jabronis, we're back. Good to be back here in the LPDS studio. Um, back here just for the weekend. Had to take care of some stuff, you know, mow the lawn, do some laundry, clean. You know, a bullshit adult tasks that you got to do uh, when you uh, live on your own that your parents can't do for you anymore. So had to take care of that. So back site alpha at the studio, resolute desk. So good to be back here. Great show last weekend. If you haven't listened to it or watched it yet, go check it out. Uh, we, had a, we had a good time. We had a lot of fun. Um, I really want to do more like that because sitting here talking to myself like a goddamn psychopath is kind of getting old. Uh, I'm not good at it. I need help. I need the entertaining uh, partnership of, you know, of guests and, and what have you. So we're going to get more guests on here. Going to get the tech to support more guests on here. Uh, we'll figure it out. Don't worry. Um, a lot of stuff happened this week, as usual. Uh, big controversy going on in the media right now. Well, parts in the media, most of it is still trying to bury it, of course. But I wanted to bring this up real quick. Uh, they, that Cuties show on Netflix. Uh, look, I didn't look too much into it because I... I I didn't have the stomach for it, but apparently it's a show about these little girls that are doing, I don't know if it's like a pageant show or booty shaking or whatever it is, but it looks disgusting. Netflix is promoting it. Uh, I have a big problem with that, obviously, um, that it's just kind of perpetuating this pedophilia is okay kind of thing. Um, I'm not canceling my Netflix sub subscription, mainly because it's getting paid for by my cell phone provider. So... Uh, yeah, you can call me a sellout, whatever. It's free Netflix, so I don't have a stake in the game now with them. So there you go. But uh, more sex trafficking news. Since I haven't talked about it in a few weeks, I'm going to flood the, flood the program with it up front and get it over with now for you guys because I know you love this shit. Um, there was a bunch of operations, Ohio, North Carolina, Georgia, in the past couple of weeks where they just busted these giant uh, sex trafficking rings a lot of children were, were, a lot of missing children were saved and discovered throughout this. They made a bunch of arrests. Um, the news was all over, right? You guys saw it everywhere in the news, correct? Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, they buried the story, of course, because it's more important to dog on uh, the political leadership now uh, and, and do that whole political TMZ bullcrap than to talk about real issues like sex trafficking and pedophilia and all that stuff. Um, meanwhile, while everything is being buried, you got California changing their, you know, petitioning to change their laws. I don't know if they actually change it yet, but they're essentially trying to make it, uh, less of a, of a felony, less of a crime for certain, you know, age groups to have quote unquote consenting sex or, or sexual acts, if you will. So like, I forgot the ages were, but, um, they called, you know, 14, 13 year olds, oh, willing children okay willing children they use those words in the law that they want to lessen the uh, the sentences and the punishments for adult human beings that are doing sex and sexual assault to quote unquote willing children okay so this is what's going on while they're burying the stories and they're talking about the tmz political gossip that's really not important at all this is what's going on. California is making it more accessible for dirty shitbag scumbag sex criminals to touch kids and get away with it and have less crime. So think about that. Remember that uh, when you go to the polls and you want to educate yourself on who you're voting for, those people are, are making it easier for pedophilia to exist. All right. And before I get superheated, because I'm already getting, getting flustered thinking about it, let's just move on. That's your sex pedo news for the week. I'm sure there'll be more next week. I think I'll be, uh, I think I'll be in the site Bravo, the studio Bravo with my brother next week. So maybe we'll talk about better stuff and I won't flood you guys and, and bombard you with more of this crap, but that's it for the week. Um, yeah, no more. I'm not going to talk about it in the junction. So you're welcome, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but before we get into the cage, 
as you know, no, as you can tell, no sleeveless shirt today. So I'll, I'll, I'll get into the reason for that at the junction, but I am aware of it. It's done on purpose. Uh, I was not a rookie mistake. I'm not a rookie. I don't make mistakes like that. I make other mistakes not related to that. Anyway, uh, so let's just uh, step into the cage. Okay, let's run. All right. Today's cage fact is sponsored by Phil's Apple Vinegar to Go Enemas. Are you hipsters getting plugged up from all the avocado toast you've been eating at brunch lately? Well, then carry a Phil's Apple Vinegar to Go Enema in your man purse. That way you can shove it up your ass right in the middle of your Antifa riot and be good to go before you know it. Visit www.philsapple.com slash OBJ to get 5% off your first to go enema. So that sounds like a pretty good situation in case you need that. I don't. I'm good to go. Thank you. But 5% off if you need it to go enema while you're out there gentrifying the neighborhoods and throwing Molotov cocktails in your mayor's office and all that good stuff. So, all right. Today's cage fact is, this is a good one. This is, this is a strange one. Uh, as if none of them were strange before and up until now, this is the strange one. But anyway, um, Nick Cage was once stalked. He had a stalker, a swim fan, if you will. St stalked by a mime. You know the, those how you doings, the mimes? I suck at it, so uh, clearly I wasn't the stalker. Uh, contrary to what I'm sure most of you probably were thinking, I was not the stalker. I can't even mime. Anyway, uh, a mime was stalking him for, for a little while, apparently. Um, it said that he would appear at his movie sets and just and follow them everywhere, movie sets, out and about in public. Um, and it, it became a problem. I guess they took care of it. You don't hear from the mime anymore. I'm sure Nick Cage found a way to get rid of him in the most Nick Cage way. I, maybe he fed him to his alligator. He put him in his, in his pyramid tomb that he's got. I don't know, but the mime is no more. The stalker's gone. But at one time or another, Nick Cage was stalked by a fucking mime. Sorry, Terrence, family show, but a mime. Anyway, all right, that's the Cage Fact today. You're welcome. Let's uh, move it on into the junction. So... I wanted to bring this up. So a lot of shit went on this week, a lot of bull crap, uh, as you know. But the big thing, obviously, um, that you should be tracking is the 19th anniversary of 9-11, uh, of the attacks on 9-11. Twin Towers, Pentagon, Flight 93. Um, and I, I know we're, you know, three days past that already. We're on to the 13th of September so I'm sure most of people, most of the people have moved on from that mindset of remembering that whole situation and, uh, and, you know, thinking about it, taking that, that slice of a uh, humble pie and thinking about uh, what went down and, uh, and why, and thinking about the, the fallen heroes, the people that died um, and all that. I know everyone is, I'm sure has moved on. You can, you could tell immediately uh, but I wanted to talk about this particular story because this is, I think, a good time to to get people immediately back into the mindset of remembering and not forgetting, never forgetting what happened there and why we do the things we do now and all that stuff. So um, I'm sure you saw on Friday the flooding of the social media of the never forget hashtags, the pound signs. Um, the long, dramatic diatribes from people of how it affected them personally and their story and how it's about them now. And I did this. And if it wasn't for, you know, 9-11 made me want to do this and be a better, I'm a better person now and I'm good now and all this other, the me monster. I forgot who said it. Was it Brian Regan who said it? Some famous person, I think a comedian, I think it was Brian Regan said, called them the me monsters where they kind of always bring it around to back to how it affects me and, and me and talking about me and I and all that selfish bullshit that you post so you can get the likes and people feel sympathy for you. And, Oh, thank you so much. You're a hero too. Don't forget that. And, uh, I, I posted, I reposted 
Andy Stumpf, he's a retired Navy SEAL. Um, I reposted his post, reposted his post about it. Uh, and pretty much talking, call most people out and then talking about what it really means uh, that whole day and that whole event. So if you haven't seen it, go check my Instagram, go check his. I reposted his whole thing about it. I thought that was pretty good. Um, I also posted some pictures. I actually went Friday night after work. I walked over to the World Trade Center and the memorial um, and that kind of uh, solidified what I wanted to talk about this weekend. Um, it was a, it was a, you know, it was a pretty heavy, heavy experience going out there, uh, and, and checking. That was the first time I actually been to the Memorial since they were done. The last time I was at that area was when it was still rubble. Um, but still it was like finally open to the public to go about their work lives. So that was what, 15 years ago, 16 years ago. I don't know, but First time I saw the memorials yesterday or your Friday or whatever it was, um, posted some pictures on it. It's just to try to capture how amazing it is out there. Everybody should go. I highly recommend going, um, and sitting and thinking about, you know, reading, going to the museum, reading up on the history of it all. Uh, so you can feel it. You, you feel the impact there. Um, it's again, it's heavy. Um, but I don't want to talk about me or my situation or, how, you know, how 9-11 affected me um, too much or, you know, what I decided to do with my life because of 9-11. Uh, I didn't join the military because of that. It helped. I wanted to join the military way before that. You can go check my little fifth grade yearbooks or whatever. I, w I wanted to join the Air Force long before that. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, I chose to serve from after 9-11 so I could give back to my country. No, it's, I'm, this is not about me. I'm a very tertiary portion of this particular story um, that I'm going to talk about uh, only because it happened, you know, it happened with me in involved in it, but I want to bring to light this family um, who I consider heroes. Uh, and I, and I know there's a, there's plenty of stories like this out there and they're not, they don't get enough coverage. Um, so I want to talk about the, the ill family, um, Fred and Mary ill, for a second here. No, I'm sure nobody knows who I'm talking about. That's fine. Um, but Mary worked with my mother. Uh, she still, she still does part-time work with my mother at the, at the foot doctor they work at in New York. Uh, and they've been working with each other for, you know, a couple of years at that point. Uh, we're talking in the 2001 timeframe. Um, and her husband, Fred ill was a firefighter. And I think he was Army Reserves as well at the time, but he was full-time active firefighter. Um, so real quick, like, uh, backstory on Fred. He went to an all-boys high school. Best four years of his life, he said. He, he talked about it, I guess, with his family constantly and how he wanted to kind of give back so that, so that people can share that same experience he had because it made him, you know, help shape the man he was. Uh, so uh, he was very big on that. And we'll kind of loop that in later on in a little bit here. But anyway, um, so September 11 happens. I'm in high school, freshman year, second day of high school. Uh, again, I'm not talking about what, you know, happened to me, but September 11 hits Fred and his ladder, ladder two, I think it was. Uh, they go in. Um, you know, and they do their thing, like you've heard a thousand times. They, they run into the buildings, they go up the steps of the buildings and the towers to save complete strangers, people they never met, just doing their job. Um, and then, uh, you know, we all know what happens. Uh, Fred was one of the 343 or whatever firefighters to die that day. Uh, and... You know, it was, it, it, it was sad. I, it didn't affect me yet. Um, my mother found out from Mary that her husband was, you know, missing in there. And I, they, a couple of weeks later, they ended up finding his body uh, in the rubble. But it was sad. It was kind of tough. I was still a young, stupid kid. I mean, I, I'm still a stupid person now, but I was young and dumb then. So it didn't really hit me. It didn't affect me, whatever. We kind of went about our lives and did our thing after that. 
Um, but Mary got a lot of, uh, I, I, I don't know if it's fundraiser money or foundation money or whatever it was. She, they, her family got money. She started a foundation. Um, and it was, she, she put, she made this foundation. She got this money. She kind of can do whatever she want with it from, from, you know, what I gathered, but she created this foundation from the money she got to give back, uh, to provide scholarships, uh, to, specifically to, uh, high schoolers who, who wanted to go to, to all boys high schools, Catholic, you know, private high schools like that. Um, because Fred, her husband, and I think her son went to one too. He was already a firefighter at the time as well. He survived. Uh, he's still alive and, and doing fine. But she created this foundation for scholarships to give back. Um, I never met this woman, mind you, at the time. My mom worked with her. That's how, that's it. That's my only connection at this time. And one day she, uh, she goes up to my mother and you know, tells her, Hey, started this, this foundation, the scholarship fund in, you know, in my husband's name. And, uh, I'm going to give the scholarship to your son. So you got a lady I never met before. Works with my mom. She gets his money from a husband losing his life you know, saving thousands of others. And she could have done anything with that. She could have, you know, paid for the funeral, uh, given it to her, you know, done more stuff with her family. But she decided to give it to a complete stranger, someone she's never met before. And it allowed me to go to my high school, Seton Hall. I'm actually wearing their hat again because the best four years of my life. And I, again, I'll talk about that at a different time, but gives, you know, gives a scholarship so I can go for, you know, for my freshman year, the rest of my freshman year, she tells my mother, Hey, we got some extra money. I got to give it to give it to you so he can go to school. We were poor. Uh, my parents were working their asses off to pay for, for us to go to the high schools we wanted to, so that we can get the better experience that we were looking for. We asked for this. Um, and instead of telling them us, we couldn't afford it. They were finding a way. My mom was working like three permanent, you know, uh, full-time jobs. My dad was working 80 hours a week. Um, they were trying to figure it out. So this, you know, this was huge first, you know, my freshman year was huge, uh, huge weight off their shoulders. It was unbelievable. Then my sophomore year comes, Mary talks to my mom again. Hey, we got some more money from the foundation. I'm going to pay for, pay for your son's school again. I'm sorry. I'm not crying. You're crying. I don't cry. I work out. So long story longer. This happens four years in a row. So this complete stranger who I didn't even meet until Maybe my junior, senior year of high school, I finally actually met her in person. Paid for me to, to have essentially the best four years of my life. Seton Hall, without a doubt, helped shape the man I am today. Helped me get into the schools I wanted to. Helped me, you know, learn and grow. You know, I got the, my best friends from there. Um, some of the best experiences of my life started because I was able to go to that school because Mary helped my family afford the ability for me to go to that school. And I don't know what I would have done if I could, if I couldn't go there, if I went to public school, I probably would have been just some, some bum. I don't know. I don't know what I would have done, but this stranger never met me, could have done anything with that foundation money. She, she gave it to me someone she never met before. And I want to bring light to her, to this entire family. I know this story probably boring to you. You can't relate, whatever. I'm talking about them anyway. This whole family is to me, a family of heroes because you got 
Her husband, Fred, who I never met, obviously, his whole life was dedicated to other people. Army Reserves, firefighter, got the call that day, like, like the 300 plus other, you know, the hundreds of other firefighters and police and first responders consciously knew he wasn't going to make it. You know, you hear stories like that a lot. You hear the red bandana guy um, and other stories of people. They know, you know, they knew, hey, I'm, I'm going in. I'm helping others. I'm not coming out. And they still did it. If you knew how many people, if you knew if this decision I make, if I go through that door, I'm dying for somebody else, to save somebody else that I don't even know. If, if that was your decision, how many people would make that decision? I don't, I don't know if I could, but Fred did. And because of that, he lost his life. And his family, you know, they lost a father, they lost a husband, a brother, whatever, you know, whatever he was to his family else, you know. And then his son followed in his footsteps. He's a firefighter. Became a firefighter. I think he was already. Same thing. Dedicating his life to help strangers. Doesn't know who they are. Never meets him before that. Goes and, and makes a decision constantly. Good chance I don't make it out of here, but if I can save a life, I'm going to do it. And he's got a family. And then you have Mary, who loses her husband, has to take care of her family on her own now. She's still got to work and live. And she gets this money to go help her work and live and provide for her family. And she gives it to a complete stranger. She gives it to some broke dick Italian she never meets before. Has no idea what I'm going to do from then on out. Just, you know, she knew my mother and knew Crazy Carol and was like, let him live the life that Fred wanted all young men to live and experience, you know, and she helped me out. And I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to bring that up because so much lately has been the me monsters taken over on Instagram and the Facebook and crushing you with the pound signs so they can get likes and follows. And then they even try to find any sort of tragedy to, to do that like September 11th. And it's, and, it, and then there's the other side of the house of the people who post a quick, never forget hashtag or pound sign or whatever. And then they're back to their daily divisive, Facebook politician, Twitter, tough guy rhetoric. And then you completely forget about the, you know, the actual event or, or the people that sacrificed everything so that we can, you know, we've gone 20 years almost without a major attack. The Boston might've been Boston marathon might've been the closest one, but you know, the, the, the events that happened since then, as far as people deciding to join the military or be police or firefighters or how we handle security in our country have all been formed from that event. And, and I don't, you know, I'm not talking about the, I'm not going to go into the conspiracies of the event and all this other crap that people are talking about. It was an inside job and all that bullshit. Uh, just from that on out, you know, everybody's lives were affected even if you weren't born until after the fact, your family's lives were affected by it. Yet we so quickly forgot. And I thought this is the perfect time to bring up this family who nobody knew to begin with. They never made the news or got on TV or had their 15 minutes of fame of doing good for somebody. Their whole existence has been behind the scenes, giving and, and being a hero to others. 
and I can sit here on my little throne on this podcast and talk about anything I want because that you know she helped a complete stranger. Mariel helped a complete stranger one day. And I know I mean, I'm not trying to get, get dramatic or whatever, but we couldn't afford school for all of us in high school, we, we, the schools we wanted to go to. So we were not going to be able to stick around there except Mary comes in and essentially saves the day, helps us out. Complete, I, can't, I can't stress it enough. I never met her until later on in my life. And I want to be here today if it wasn't for that. You know, there's, there's nothing I could ever say or do to repay that family for what they've done for me and what they've done for countless others, you know, since then and what they've done for my family. Um, you just don't find a lot of good people like that anymore lately at least on, on, you know, at least in public on social media. And I, again, there's, there's dozens of stories like this out there that need to be continually pushed out there. Um, and I'll talk about this again next year too, when people forget and then they remember again, you know, the week of September 11th, everyone always seems to remember then. And then they immediately go right back to forgetting, right back to the regularly scheduled riots and divisiveness and bullshit that's really not important but i'll always go back and i always think of of what the ill family did for me and what they did for my family these are people that gave to complete strangers they gave their lives they gave money they sacrificed and they continue to sacrifice and i don't i don't i don't really know what else to say about it um again i sorry for the boring story this week um i just wanted to i wanted to give them something i can i there's nothing i can ever say or do ever to repay them i mean there's nothing i could do to repay my family for what they've done to, to raise me as well i don't want to dog on them obviously but no matter what you know i could be i'll yeah, i could be president i still won't be able to fully repay back people like them that were just just so, so considerate and generous and heroic to help a stranger out, help strangers out. So hopefully this little 15, 20 minute, I don't even know how long I've been rambling on for, kind of brings to light a little bit of of that you know their gratitude and, and their sacrifices as a family um and and hopefully people you know think about stuff like this i know it's easy to forget about it, it hasn't it didn't happen to you it, it was it was a gift to me you know that was the gift that they gave me um but i remember it every time every you know every day uh and it's and it's easy to to kind of fall by the wayside and and go back into your normal routine of being angry at stupid shit and stressing over bull crap um, and, and forgetting about, you know, the important stuff in life. But uh, for me, it's a little easier because I have, you know, I have the ill family. Um, and, and, you know, real quick, this shirt. So the foundation, you know, started, you know, having, I don't know if they have like 5k runs or what they, what they've been doing in New Jersey, New York since then, but um, every year they have, uh, something they go on and they give out some shirts. So this is the first one, I believe from like 2002. And you can see it's like, it's tattered. Um, it's worn out. I got stains on it from, I don't know, dip crap, whatever. Um, but I have, a, I have, you know, if you, if anyone who knows me and actually seen me out and about knows, I pretty much exclusively wear like Shirts from Embry Riddle Baseball, not Embry Riddle, Embry Riddle Baseball. Uh, I still have loans to pay for those assholes, so thanks a lot, Embry Riddle. But um, Seton Hall preps closed still from 20 years ago. And then Fred Ill in memoriam shirts. 
says FDNY. It's got a, um, a September 11th, like a uh, twin towers backdrop in, in the back of the shirt. Uh, that's all I wear. It's got, I got different colors and it reminds me every day uh, of that sacrifice and not just his, but all those people, all those other stories that you hear, the people that consciously knew they were not making it out, but they had to go save others. They had to go sacrifice for others. Um, and if you can, and if you try hard enough to think about that stuff on a regular basis, it'll help make you a better person too, because then you'll be able to think, man, if these people could sacrifice their lives for strangers, I can maybe sacrifice, you know, my personal issues that I got going on and not project it on others per se. Maybe I won't be an asshole to the Dunkin' Donuts guy just because he put too much sugar in my coffee culotta, you know? Try to help, you know, try to step back and think about stuff like the ill family and what they've done and how they've gotten virtually no recognition for it, you know, publicly or through the social media or where everyone thinks the important recognition should be. They're not getting in on that crap. So I hope they, you know, if they see this, I'm sure Mary is way too busy uh, to listen to this garbage. But uh, if she does see this, you know, I, it's people like her. It's, it's people like Fred. Uh, it's those people that we should try to live better lives for in, in, you know, in honor of, in memory of. Um, and I'm thankful to have them in my life. I'm thankful I have a, a ton of people from my family uh, that have done things like that. My grandfather was in World War II. My other grandfather, you know, worked till he was 80 years old to, to help, you know, provide for his family. So I, I'm lucky in that regard that I can always step back and have multiple people and families to think about how they sacrifice for the good of others. That, so I can step back and stop being such a shit bag sometimes. And, and, uh, and think about that instead. Um, so if nothing else, please don't forget about what happened in 9-11 and not so much the, the conspiracy inside job and how it all went down, but what ha when I say what happened, I mean what happened with the, the people who sacrificed everything for complete strangers, for the, just for the good, for the good of, you know, the common good, the greater good, if you will. Think about that. Never forget that. Never forget the tragedy that happened on that day and the loss of life. And people will never get to see some family members ever again. They're gone. So, you know, when you go out and you want to go Facebook politician on somebody and tough talk somebody behind your keyboard and talk down to them and be an asshole... Think about those people who, who have lost their lives and sacrificed everything so that we are still able to comfortably do that. Okay, again, if you think about the events post 9-11, you know, we went out to go help, you know, eradicate Al-Qaeda and find Bin Laden and all this other crap we've done since then which has essentially prevented anything like 9-11 from happening since that occurred. Again, the Boston Marathon might have been the biggest one besides that. But otherwise, thousands and thousands of plots and, and terrorist threat cells in, you know, in the U.S. and all this other stuff have been thwarted and mitigated and eliminated before they can actually become a problem because of the way you know, the, because of the effects, the second and third order effects post 9-11. Um, so we have the ability to continue bitching about our culottas and tough talking and trolling people on the internet safely behind our computers because of stuff like that. Okay, so before you troll someone, before you call somebody racist or assholes or try to cancel them for no good reason because you're offended, uh, think about those people. Think about the ill family. Think about all the other firefighters and police and any just the regular humans, the guy in the red bandana that 
gave their lives for strangers, for the greater good. And then take your deep breath, step back, and maybe not be an asshole and a beta bitch boy behind your keyboard after thinking about that stuff. All right, that's all I got. I'm done bitching and moaning and boring you guys to death. Um, hope you liked it. Tell your friends, tell your enemies if you didn't like it. Appreciate you guys listening and watching and tuning in every week. Um, again, I, you guys are the ones keeping me going on this. I like doing this. I, I started doing this for me so I could get better at thinking out loud and entertaining and, and critically analyzing situations. But the fact that I have, you know, people that are actively following and commenting and trash talking, uh, I love it. It's, it's awesome. So thank you for that. Keep it going. Um, spread spread the word on the show so that other people can do the same thing because um it's great it's great for my emotional and mental health as well uh that i have so many people you know in my corner that support me and also call me on my shit which is also great too so um follow all my shit uh libretti podcast diary show on youtube apple spotify anchor um write a review on apple comment on the youtube i try to reply to all the comments um go to the instagram at L at lpd underscore show that's where i post the treasure hunts um the poll questions all that stuff uh speaking of treasure hunt before i forget this week's treasure hunt uh photo was the charging bull um and i put a uh, a quote in there from the movie hitch so the movie, the answer was Hitch for this one because um, that was, you know, part of, the, part of the movie was when Vance Munson got kicked in the nuts by Eva Mendez and then he stuck his head up the bull's ass. Uh, th I, I don't know if he was trying to get a good look at the T-bone or whatever, but um, it was in that movie. And uh, Lights Out Lytle, Drew Lytle, he's an Envy Riddle alum, a baseball player with us, um, heart of gold in that kid, and he had lightning quick response time this past week so he got hitched immediately um so i got a good one i well a good one for me for next week a treasure hunt that i'll post so keep a lookout for that we'll see who's got the uh the quickest hands in the west this go around but shout out to to drew light lights out Lytle. thank you for that uh but yeah go follow at lpd underscore show i also post on my facebook it's a personal one i don't have a i don't have an lpd page yet uh i'll Maybe I'll have one. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Anyway, uh, thanks again for listening. I love you guys. Um, and, you know, stay strong. And I was talking.